Leo rising, yes it's here, the ascendant, my dear, the spotlight, generosity you see, they come in roaring, regal be, kings and queens in the first house, uh, not quiet like a mouse, you're gonna hear the lion just roar, going through the chart, you know they will soar, I explore, as you see, the astrologist giving you potent poetry, it flows, and then you know I lift up my nose with these flows. I'm one of the baddest bros on the microphone. No clones. I wasn't hanging with Tyrone. Phone home, cause I am ET, and I'm giving you nothing but elevated poetry. Happy New Year for the galactic. Don't you wanna stand? You know I am clap this, clap this. Mac this, understand, bouncing off the mattress, jumping so high, of course, my third eye, I'm gonna elevate like that ill guy, seventh house, Aquarius, you know, fourth house, Scorpio, bro, tenth house, it's the Taurus, you see, public image, legacy, career B, breaking it down so you can see, cancer, twelfth house, emotional, sensitive B, it's a hidden skill and talent, uh, I'm valid, I'm flowing, <laughs> time to go in, Ooh, oh! what's up y'all, I'm having fun, I'm tired, but I'm here, and I'm happy to be here with you, it's your boy Eric Taylor, Big E Astrology, Ooh, oh! <laughs> Listen, you got to be a little swaggadocious when you're talking about the Leo rising sign ascendant. Okay? I mean, this is a fixed fire sign. And Leo's, you know, we'll let some people get into the room and the chiz at where you is at. Your boy E is up to biz at. Um, wow. How you doing? This is Knowledge is Love, episode 152, talking about the Leo rising sign ascendant in astrology in the natal birth chart. Okay. So Leo's, well, let's talk about the astro weather, right? I didn't look at the ascendant for tonight. Um, probably Sag or Cap. I don't, I don't know where we're at, but the moon is in Scorpio. We had the opposition to Jupiter today. You wake up in the morning, it will be opposing Uranus and Taurus. It's, uh, you know, going to make that trine later tomorrow before it goes into Sagittarius. Make that trine to Neptune. Okay, this is uh, some powerful energy that's going on in the collective. I don't know if the, the chat is working or not. I don't see anybody. Hopefully we are on live. And uh, if anybody's in here, make a comment so I know we're on live. Uh, I believe we are. Yeah, yeah we're live? Okay, so... You know, I really think that the, hey, how you doing? All right, good. Now I know, now I know. The Leo is a fixed fire sign, okay? And when you're going through the 12th house zodiac wheel, as we will tonight, right? I've just finished off with a client, so I'm tired. I, I got to eat. I, you know, I haven't had no dinner, nothing. But, I, you know, I'm dedicated. So the Leo is a fixed fire sign. So yes, these people can be dynamic, expressive. They can have feline cat features, the eyebrow. Now, even if a, a guy has got a baldy, you'll still see cat-like eyes or the eyebrows very distinctive. But usually, I mean, look from J-Lo to Donald Trump and all the Leo Risings, they definitely have the hair as part of their personality. Their facial features definitely look cat-like, lioness, lion-like. Um, they show up and they can be bright and colorful. They can be arrogant, stubborn, passionate, creative, entertainers, politicians, the authority. 
It's a very regal sign, kings and queens. And they are very expressive with their clothing, what Leo risings wear. And here's my Taurus rising. And it's been a very hot day. Yeah, she's been grinding you guys all day out with the boys and running. And it's hot out here. AZ, we rocking. Well, we're, it's oh, only 109 right now. Oh, it's now. only 109, but it was like 115, 116 to like today. Seven, I don't know. I, I went into Phoenix a little bit, so got up to 117 over there. Yeah, it was, it was cooking, okay? So, but, you know, the first house is your I am, your outer mask, your physical appearance. And so this means for the Leo rising sign, the chart ruler is what? Yes, the sun. So depending on where your sun is in the chart, you will you know, locate it. And that's where you will see the bigger themes of life for you, for the Leo ascendant, the sun. And so the sun could be very different if it's in the first house, more self-centered, right? More focused on yourself until 26 or 30 years old. Second house, third house, each house, the sun plays out differently. That's why when people are like, oh, we're born um, the same day, just hours apart, but we're totally different. Well, because your sun sign could be in different houses, and that affects your personality, your self-expression, your ego, your identity, okay? Your life purpose. The sun is your purpose, all right? So um, let's you want to go, let's go to the chat and see who Nobody we got here. here Je well, no, I'm yeah. sorry, that's so wrong. Yep. The most important person is here, and that's Evelyn. There we go. What's up, Ev? That's it. So, um, and I hope the new cat is going well. If you picked it up yet, you know, and condolences on you know on your, your cat passing, but um. The second house for the Leo Ascendant, Virgo the Virgin, the Lyrical Surgeon. What's the second house? Family values, self-worth, assets, savings, money itself, material items, how you earn money, things you may collect, antiques. It's your food, speech, five senses, survival. So when you have Virgo there, your speech can be very precise very analytical and logical they're kind of laid back right it's this is mercury virgo but it's not gemini so it's more reserved feminine energy it's more introspective receptive so they've got a little sixth sense leo risings they can be um very particular they can be very smart and frugal with their money they know how to make it and they know how to save it and invest it. You know, I don't remember all the Leo Risings, but I put in the description down below my Leo Rising uh, video so you guys can watch it. But, you know, just the two references I gave you, I think maybe Shakira maybe one too, but but just looking at J-Lo and Donald Trump and, you know, there's a bunch of others. But, you know, they're smart with their money, right? So also when it comes to food, Leo Risings can sometimes have stomach issues. So they got to really watch what they're eating. Okay, it's muy, muy, muy importante. And their speech is usually they're going to be pretty social and friendly. They like to fix things, make things better. Right? We have a Leo Rising in the house, Keisha Cooper. What's up, Keisha Cooper? You're a Leo, Leo Rising? Okay. And Muriel sent me a new kitty. Who's Muriel? Uh, I think Evelyn, that may be Evelyn's sister. I believe. Nice sister. Okay. So you'll have to, well. Yeah, maybe you send us a picture of the kitty or whatever. Or text it to us. That's cool. But, um, yeah, you know, that, that Leo rising, Keisha, you got to let us know as we go through how these houses play out for you. So the third house. So remember, the second house is the toddler years. The first house, you're, wow, wow, I am the baby born from the mother. The time you chose to be born, no victimhood in astrology, right? You chose these karmas. You chose these experiences, these parents, these siblings, these spouses, these enemies, these frenemies, okay? So this is why learning astrology, this ancient wisdom, the map of your life is so important. 
so you can improve the relationship with self and others throughout your whole life and understand your place um, on this journey, you know, for your life, part of your mission and de destiny, your assignment while you're here. So the third house, now we're off to elementary school, kindergarten through fifth grade. It's your siblings, your writing, your communications, your learning, right? Your hand skills, self-efforts, your local community, neighbors, neighborhood, 50 miles or closer to home, and vehicles, transportation. Now, remember, I always tell you guys, the chart wraps around. So that first house is 0, 12, 24, 36, 48 years old, 60, 72, 84, 96, 108, 120. We capped off. The aliens fused our telomeres. Mira, that's it. Ah, no mas. <laughs> so the third house becomes what? The adult relationship with your mother. Tu madre at 26 years old, at 38, and so on. Okay? So... That's Libra. So there's the need to be very social, to plan events, to socialize, to run around the community with your friends, to, you know, be, you know, trying to look kind of smooth and fly in social media. Oh, what are you doing? You're going shopping? Oh, meet me here. Okay, I'll text you. We'll hook up and we'll go there. Da -da -da -da. Leos are socialites. That's that Libra third house. Okay, and they can plan a party. Okay, this is definitely that type of energy. Um, remember, they're seeking balance wherever you see the Libra. Now, obviously, it gets flavored with whatever, whatever planets you have here in this house, but you know, you could be the peacekeeper in elementary school, right? Why did Michael just put push Jeremy off the off the slide? And you're like, no, 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 that's not right. Don't do that. Why did, why did Heather just, you know, throw the dodgeball at Nancy's face and her nose is bleeding? What's wrong with you? Why are you throwing the ball in her nose? It's not nice. There you go. Okay. So, you know, these are some of the examples of just the, uh, you like how I go there, right? I kind of sell it. The uh, Libra in the third house. And you can be very peaceful and harmonious. Your skills they can be of interior decorating, designing, teacher, social worker, therapist, counselor, uh, designer, right? You can be someone that's the lawyer, paralegal, so many different things, you know? This is just one indicator for the career, the third house. But, you know, remember, Libra is the cardinal air sign. So it's all about kind of initiating the peace, harmony, and balance, and really about communicating and building uh, relationships. So you could be really talented on social media. These actually can be some of your, uh, what do they call them, the influencers, social media influencers, or people who are really good. Like you look at their social media page, you're gonna be like, oh, they're good. They're always out and about being social. They don't have too many pictures on their Instagram by themselves. <laughs> oh no, Keisha, you'd have to let us know, you know. But but sometimes they could be, you know, a little bit, you know, reserved in certain areas of their lives. But they're pretty social with their friends, and they're going to be pretty friends. Check that out. Or you come book a, a chart reading with me. It's Leo season. If you're a Leo rising, you could take advantage of the Leo birth chart sale. Normally one twenty five, live sixty minutes over Zoom recorded live session asking questions only $98 plus you get videos of all your placements and a little type little tiny little write up breaking down your sun and moon it's really good and you'll love it i promise you fourth house scorpio now if you're a millennial 83 to 95 you got pluto in scorpio in the fourth house there could have been some pain trauma and crises some abuse in the home now let's just say we're talking about this with no planets just Scorpio there, there could be some intense emotions in the home. Your home could be uh, focused on a, a lot of truth, a lot of money talk in the home. Somebody, mom or you, could be a little empathic, okay? Scorpio is, you know, the Scorpio energy, just so you guys know, a little, little tip, sun, moon, or rising for Scorpios. 
It's an indicator that your mother either had a difficult pregnancy or a difficult birth. She will tell you, our twins have a Scorpio moon, and she went proclantic. Tough Naya, pregnancy, right? Naya Williams is here. Hey, Naya, nice to meet you. So Keisha and Naya and Naya Wills. Sorry. Wills. Being a form of Williams, I kind of. Yeah, Naya Wills. You want to share your big Libra three? Son. Your Libra. Libra Sun, a Leo Rising, Leo Rising, and a Leo South Node. And a Leo South Node. Okay, well, Leo. Are you crying about that, or are you hot? She looks like she's crying about that. Is that a, is that a hard place? No, 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 no. Leo, Leo Sun. You must be real. Or a Leo Rising. South Node. She's a Leo Rising and a Leo, and Leo South, South Node. Note. Yeah. Well, you know that can mean you could be very focused on relationships in this life. We have spiritual warrior nails. All and right, what's up, spiritual warrior? His daughter is a uh, Leo rising, and he is a Pisces rising. Oh, I love you, Pisces risings. My mother was a Pisces rising. So two Leos are uh, your daughter, and then um, and then um, and and Naya, the Leo birth chart sale. Okay, it goes to August twenty first. Definitely take advantage of it. It's for sun, moons, and risings. I've opened it up now. So back over to, to Keisha. Okay, so let's get back over here. So she's a 24 Leo, 24 yep. degree Leo. Oh, that, that was what she did in the class of this. So now she says she's a Scorpio on the fourth house cusp, Saturn mm -hmm. and Uranus. Ooh. And she played that little face too. Was mom kind of tough? Growing up in the home? It's confusing. My moon is a Scorpio. Scorpio moon. No, wait, so. is that? No, 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 I'm sorry. That's a different person that said that. That's Ooh. Naya. Sorry, I'm, Naya. I'm, I'm missing, I'm messing you guys up. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so Naya, the Scorpio moon, so that means your mother, she either had a difficult birth or pregnancy with you. Maybe C-section, breach, preeclampsia, something. Um, you know, I know I just had a client who had a placement with that. So, you know, it can be, it can be challenging, you know, and this is for Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising. But you Leos, Sun, Moon, Rising, take advantage of the birth chart. So the Scorpio, though, in the fourth house, this can also show Leo Risings, they can have a desire to, not always, they can move away from their hometown. More so for Scorpio Risings with the Aquarius or Virgo Risings with the Sag in the fourth house. But it depends on if they are emotionally attached to the mother and the family, then they won't leave their hometown. But if you like for you with the Saturn Uranus, maybe you did leave. Maybe mom was too strict in the home. You know, I mean, the Saturn could represent the mother's strictness or it can represent, you know, the father being you know, overly, uh, you know, tough in the home and stuff. Now, for the Leo Risings. Right, and I put it in community. The fifth house is Sagittarius. Of what? Creativity. Oh, and by the way, the fourth house, not only it is, uh, so I, I, I totally skipped explaining it, sorry. Middle school, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, your mother, your roots, your ancestors, the mother's lineage. This is your childhood home, adult home, retirement home. It can be after school programs, church, like Boys and Girls YMCA can be a uh, church. Maybe you go to dance, you play sports. Um, it also can, you know, so this is kind of just, you know, random, but I want to share this with you guys. So, you know, the fourth house can sometimes show the ending of your mother's life, the eighth house, the ending of the father and the 12th house, the end of your life. But only God knows when we pass, no astrologer should ever predict or tell you about death. Okay. But definitely medical astrology, I can tell you about sicknesses and illnesses, and we'll get to it in the sixth house. So the fourth house also can indicate the homeland. Saturn there, you could work for the government or the military, you know. Um, it also can show, um, you know, the grandma, stuff like that. So like I said, it's the ancestors. Um, and let's say if you had Venus there, depending on the sign, you have Venus in the fourth house, maybe you could have a green car at some point in your life. Okay? Just little tidbits of oodles and oodles of O's, you know, and knowledge for you. So let's get to the fifth house. It's your children, your creativity, your hobbies, high school, college, past life karmas, ancient history, dating, romance, fun sex. That's high school, college years. Do you remember? It's um, your self-expression. It's 
Um, think of it as like your heart chakra, but it's the stage performing speculative games, right? Oh, you want to be the actor. You want to gamble. You want to be a politician. It's political discussion, though. It's day trading in the stock market. It's fantasy sports, gambling, stuff like that. So, but you can see ancient history in the past life karmas. So with Sagittarius here, there is that energy to be a great storyteller, to be kind of like somebody that wants to get into anthropology or archaeology or be a teacher, professor, a preacher. You know, they're the person that's in high school and college and they already know, well, after I go to uh, Yale for uh, grad school, excuse me, or business school, I'm going to go to uh, Stanford. And, you know, they, they got it all planned out. That's that's the Sag. You know, they've got, that's the Sag in the fifth house. But also, your first child could have some Sagittarius energy. So we kind of kind of Okay, go ahead. Anyway, so um, I am Audie Rose. Hey, Audie Rose, nice to meet you. I am nice Eric Taylor. She's new. You're new. And, nice to meet you. Um, if you want to share your sun, moon, rising, she, please do that. Okay. She's, she said both herself and her husband, that found this very interesting. Oh. They're both Scorpio moons Okay. and Virgo suns. Oh, wow. And um, like I have, um, she, like she was a breech child. Yeah. And my husband was born when his mother was 37, so much older. Right. So she may yeah. have been preclamptic or gone through different things. And that's why you guys both have the Scorpio moons. I'm going to hop around a little bit because she wrote down later on both my child's moons, mm. both my child's moon were in the eighth house, but not Scorpio moon. Oh, an eighth house. Well, make sure. You don't keep secrets from your children. A lot of times when the child has the moon in eighth house, they kind of feel like they don't really know their mom so well. And then we have Sandra Cooper. You can learn Sandra Cooper, not Keisha Cooper, but Sandra Cooper. Welcome, Sandra Cooper. Nice yeah. to meet you. I'm Eric Taylor. And i got to get a quick bite of watermelon. Yeah, we've got two read. Coopers here. Two okay. Coopers. Two Coopers. Two Coopers and we're two Taylors. <laughs> And so um, she said, "Hey everyone, and she's so happy to catch you tonight. Catch you tonight. I'm Thank so you. happy, happy too. to be here. Definitely need a reading to help me understand my T square. I'm a Pisces. Oh, she's a Pisces. Mm -hmm. I know Pisces very well. We're the best. Um, Nia Williams says she's got, gonna get it. Yes, she yeah, did. You know me, yeah. Um, let's see. Da, 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 I oh, Brittany Swanson. Oh, she's new too. Hey, Brittany. I'm just joined. I'm a Leo rising. Oh, Leo. All big words. Uh, like, I love it. I love it. Oh, so, okay. so then you missed the first part. You have to rewind it back later. But Leo risings, I mean, do you have the, the cat like features? Well, maybe if you book a chart reading for me, you send me a picture so I can see. But usually, Leo risings, you guys, very distinctive hair. And I said, even for the guys, if they have a bald, so some people will see me, they think, oh, he could be a Leo rising. Not, I'm a Scorpio rising, but I did stay in a Leo holiday in last night. Uh -huh. So anyway, but <laughs> I love saying that. I don't know why those commercials make me laugh. They're very silly, but the Leo risings, they can have cat like features or feline looks. They're very regal. They love to, they like attention. You guys know you do, but they, they're, they're dramatic and expressive and, but very regal Kings and Queens. And usually, you know, remember it's your outer mask, your physical appearance. They can be pretty sharp dressers, Leo Risings. So back to finishing the fifth house with Sagittarius. And you guys who are Leo Risings, please chime in as we go along. Let me know if you have something in planets there and how that energy works for you. But also Sagittarius fifth house, high school and college, you may have been into some sports. You could have, you could really be into fantasy sports. You could do some gambling. Maybe you go to Vegas or Atlantic City every once in a while. Maybe you're not ODN, but maybe you just gamble a little bit here. Maybe you get your little scratch off tickets, your little lottery and stuff. You know what I mean? Um, things like that. Um, but you can be very good writers and storytellers. Leo Risings, yeah, that's Sagittarius for a thousand. And you wouldn't be afraid to start your own business. You could have the Etsy shop. You could have the shop on eBay, your Shopify. You're like, I'm doing it. You know, my boss don't treat me right. I'm starting my own thing and I'm going I'm to quit in three years. Like that. Now that Scorpio Lilith, that's in the fourth house. That 
you know, I'm not going to get all up in your business, but there could have been some sort of emotional or physical abuse in the home. You could have felt very rejected. It's, it's repressed energy, but Scorpios are your tribe. But that means mom could have been like, you could have been like, hey, mom, can I have so-and-so for dinner? And she'd be like, no, go to your room. Lilith. And I know people with Lilith in the fourth house, they even faced physical abuse. Their mother, father hit them, spanked them, punched them. Okay. I'm not saying this is you, but it can be pretty intense, Lilith and Scorpio. But that means you're very empathic, probably, probably very spiritual and intuitive too. Okay, so let's get to the sixth house. This is now you're the adult. It's your work, your health, your hygiene, your daily routine, your coworkers, your bosses, conflicts, divorce, sicknesses and illnesses. Right. This is when you run your errands. You're going to the store. I got to go to a bank. Got to go to cleaners. Got to go do this. Go do, do that. Da, 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 right? She was doing today. Running around. That's your sixth house. So when you have Capricorn there, number one. You, it's a cardinal earth sign, you could be the one at work that initiates everything and gets it done. Your boss is like, oh my God, you're the best worker I've ever had. You plan the, the, the parties at work. You plan the, the outings afterwards. You're the first one to hand in, if you're a teacher, your, um, your lesson plans. You're the first one to hand in the assignments at work. You're the overachiever. That's the Capricorn sixth house. But when it comes, and you'd like to plan and organize and be disciplined and structured. And if you're not, you need to be. It's also small pets. I told you conflicts and divorce. Um, Capricorn will be older people. So you may have friends with older coworkers or bosses. Now, when it comes to sicknesses and illnesses, you can have eczema, Leo Risings. You can have issues with your nails, your teeth, your bones, your knees. Okay, so Leo Risings, those are some of the sicknesses and illnesses you can deal with. Now, planets there can tell you more of the story. But just Capricorn, bare, butt naked in the sixth house, that's what you can deal with, my friend. Do tell, do tell, do tell. Anyone, anyone? Different, there's different reasons for each, for each thing we go through, right? But anyways, so you'll get, I'm so sorry, but... Just send her love. Trust me, send her love. you can do it. And she said she had, uh, I also have a Saturn square in my mom. Yeah, that explains the issues with mom too. That's no joke. Um, and also, you said you have a Pisces moon, right? So what happens is when you had the Pisces moon when you were born, your mother was not able to nurture and care for you the way that she wanted to. Could have been, she was depressed, postpartum depression. She could have had some mental issues, some drug or escapism issues. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean she was a bad mom or didn't want to love you. She, she was just challenged. That's what happens with the Pisces moon. Well, you're super creative and you must love some music and be really dope with the music skills. Um, seventh house, Aquarius. Aquarius! We're in the age of Aquarius. Pluto will be back there January 21st, 2024. Do you want some more? Then it goes retrograde one last time, September to November. Election day. Okay, so anyway, seventh house. So this is what? The other half, right? You gotta split it. The other half. So this is you in relationship to marriage partner, business partner, all relationships. It's contracts, negotiations, open enemies, the scales of justice for the courthouse, enemies you see coming and the scales of the marketplace. When you go shopping, you wanna buy things, sales, marketing, you can see fame. It's your second child. It's the skills of the first child. You see the grand grandmother, I think here too, on the father's side, I believe. So there's just a lot in the seventh house. So when you got Aquarius here, you don't want, Leo Risings do not want somebody up underneath them all the time. Y'all want some freedom in relationships. Liberate me! Right? Leos and Aquarius, they get along really well because they're both kind of like doing their own thing and then they come together and get together and then they go apart again. So when you have Aquarius in the seventh house, doesn't mean you're going to be in a fruple. Doesn't mean you can't be faithful in a relationship or marriage. It just means that you still need a level of independence, okay? 
Now, if you got certain planets here, then it can speak a whole nother conversation of story glory. But you can be very innovative, very futuristic, weird. You can attract weird partners. People that are kind of, and maybe they're just not weird. They could be perfect for you, especially if you like astrology. You can marry an astrologer. They're you, pretty cool. Yeah. She's got Jupiter in Aquarius, so she literally married an astrologer. Just so you know, Jupiter represents for you ladies the husband in the chart. Mars is just a boyfriend. You don't want to be marrying your Mars. That gets you in trouble. Although, you know, sometimes, depending if you have other placements there, it could work out. She kind of married to Mars, too, because I'm a Capricorn on Moon, and her Mars is in Capricorn. So she got the best of both worlds. And I, I mean, it's so funny that I'm saying this right now with you guys. We always joke because we're come, we're 15 years of marriage now. We always say that I always say to her, I'm her oldest, uh, her He's longest, boy, longest boyfriend. boyfriend. And she's my longest girlfriend. So there you go. So there you go. Mars, you know. And um, that's kind of funny how that works out. So go ahead. Brittany, yes. she is 24. Oh, you're only 24 years old? way too young for this. Oh, you're not too Her young. Her mom is an Aquarius with okay. Capricorn rising. Oh, okay. She raised her on this stuff. So she's kind of, she says she has an understanding of, of astrology. And mm. um, she does have big eyes and a lot of hair. Mm. A lot of hair, as she said. Oh, that's great, Brittany. Well, let me tell you, if yeah. you're learning this at 24 and you already know basics yeah. of astrology, you're doing good, my friend. Start doing all this work now. Don't wait till you're old like us. Yeah. If you can seriously get the spiritual, honor Saturn, Saturn and Pisces, spiritual discipline. Excuse me, guys. I had to have a bite of watermelon. I'm starving. I've been working all day. But you can learn the map of your life at 24. God bless you, my friend. That would be the greatest gift to yourself and your future self. Now, I would tell you, because I will tell everybody, if I was God or president, I would not encourage marriage until after your Saturn returns. So no marriage till 29. And I'm not saying that people can't get married before then it'd be successful and a blessing and all that. It can. You also need to look where your Saturn's placed in your chart. And every chart shows different well, tendencies. But, wait, wait, let me, but let's just say if your Saturn's in the seventh house, you definitely don't want to get married before your Saturn returns. Because your brain is still forming. We're not officially adults, right? Because the cerebral cortex, the abludula, 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 excuse me, is still forming in women. You guys, no secret, you mature faster than men. It's between 25 and 28. And men, it's between like 27 and 30, 31. Okay? So that coincides with the maturity of Mars at 27. The moon is at 21. The sun you heard of Club 27, right? Janis Daplin, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, they all died at 27 because 27 is a crucial year in your life. So you're not there yet, Brittany. But Saturn is at 28 and a half, 29. The sun between 26 and 30, depending on the sign in the house. So we're not really adults until about 28, 29 years old. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Go ahead. So... Um what are you doing with that? I'm doing a little dance. Anyway, so Keisha, she said... She, she this said, is my 11th house stellium. I like to be a little silly and weird sometimes. She said she left home and never looked back. I heard that, Keisha. Me too. Yeah. Well, I had to go back way later. <laughs> but anyway. Go back. My go family back is in Atlanta and I currently live in Virginia Beach. Oh, Virginia Beach in the house. I used to party down there. I went to University of Maryland at College Parks. Yo, Terps! So I like Virginia Beach. And Brittany said, yep. Virginia Beach is a and lot of fun. Evelyn's mom is Leo Rising. Oh, that's right. I remember that. And Audie Rose said, thank you. That was very insightful. I did not lie to either of my children. They're 21 and 23 now. Oh, good. And um, Well, no, I didn't say lie. I just said that sometimes there could be some secrets and they might not always understand you. But it also can indicate that their mother is into the occult knowledge. And here you are into astrology. So that's that can be a good thing for them. And she said, thank you. Um, she's always prided herself on um, doing that. That's good. So the eighth house 
is Pisces. So yes, Leo risings can be very, very spiritual. What's the eighth house, you guys? This is after the marriage. It's power, control, obsession, psychology, sudden events, abuse, sex. Eighth house indicates the in-law. So Pisces in-laws, they could be in pharmaceuticals. They could be film, photography, right? Something artsy, creative. They could be, you know, some sort of doctor. The eighth house is people that are sexually attracted to you, okay? So Leos, Pisces, sun, moon, rising, they might be jiving after you, okay? It's also occult knowledge, right? Anything hidden underground. So ancient herbs like oils, doTERRA, or plants and herbs, right? It's also astrology, tarot, human design, metaphysics, numerology, magic, santaria, bujadria, mirai, escuchanes, everything, okay? But it's also debt, taxes, IRS, secret society, skull and bones, FBI, CIA, the alphabet boys, DEA, don't play. So when you got Pisces there, watch out for the deception. It's also transformation. It's death and rebirth, the thin veil between the physical realm and the spiritual realm. So when you got Pisces there, Leo risings can be very psychic and intuitive. Yeah, you might not think that when you meet a Leo rising, but they can be deep, deep, deep. That Pisces eighth house, okay? So that's a really interesting placement. Okay. Any comments on your eighth house, you guys? Um. I don't know. We have like a lot of stuff and we're way behind. Okay. okay. So Keisha Cooper gave birth to a Scorpio rising, very long and difficult birth. And yeah, that's, that's why you had a Scorpio answer. rising, yeah. Oh my, I'm sorry. God sweetie. bless you. Oh, what was the last part? I didn't hear that. She had she she was very long and difficult and she needed blood transfusion. Oh well she she needed it too and they didn't give it to her. Yeah, no, I lost fifty percent of my blood volume with the twins. I hemorrhaged. And I told them, I told them, I said, listen, I'm they didn't hemorrhaging. listen to her and they did not listen to me. And then all of a sudden, you now they was, treat black women in the hospital everywhere. And it was like a few, like two hours afterwards. It turned into an episode of Grey's Anatomy, you guys. Yeah. And I'm like, OK, my wife is not going to die and leave me with four sons. I can't do this. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was like it was, crazy. it was the worst pain ever. Oh, my gosh. Anyways, um, then. See, I love this. So. Mm -hmm. Adi Rose is reaching out to Keisha saying, hey, and she loves Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. And Keisha Cooper has a successful Etsy shop. I, tell me how you get successful on Etsy. But um, I'd love to know what you sell. But I sell stuff, and Etsy doesn't do a darn thing for me. She does organic and vegan and body and skincare, you guys. Her stuff brain. is amazing. Check it out, for real. I make really great stuff. Um, Show them your lip balm. It's right there. Where's my lip balm? Oh, well, here's one. She makes deodorants, my lip balm. lip there balms. So I make um, hair, super, body, facial oil. Super natural, organic, compostable packaging. Yeah, it's. This, this is my my autumn flavor. Um, this she one. There's four flavors. Pomegranate, mint, green tea, and then the. <laughs> this is just the top. I mean, the, the top is missing, but this is spring, and this is cherry leafy ginger. Anyways, I make amazing stuff. Yeah. And um, check it out. It's Sabale at Marival, Pure. Uh, Pure com. in Tucson, which is a really exclusive high end um, resort. And I am featured in several eight figure uh, retreats with very high end folks. But now I got to sell more of it out to everybody else because it's not just for those people, it's for everybody. Yeah. Anyways, um, let's see. Naya Williams says Naya? she's nosy. What was she doing? LLL. LOL. I'm not. I don't know. I, 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 I think you're good. Keisha Cooper. Keisha said, hi, Audie Rose. Yes. I, I like that name, hair. Audie Rose. And um, it's beautiful. And I love living near water. Yeah, I would love to oh, live near water, too. I live breeze. in the middle of the desert. Yeah. A very hot desert at the moment. Yeah. You know, and it is what it is. Like eight months of year it is, is perfect. What it, is. Yeah. it is what it is. Perfect. Um, eight months of year. Yeah, but it, it it'll it'll pass, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just stay in the house during this time as much as I can and then I try to, you know, do whatever I'm doing quickly. Um and I am very thankful for living in the house and not being God, I would hate being out in this heat. It'd be horrible to be homeless right now. 
You get it? You guys should sign up for my astrology foundations course. I'm going to be teaching it again and it's going to be towards the end of September, nine weeks. I'll it's be a really good I'll course. be making an announcement. The first class, they loved it. It was awesome. And I'll be doing the second level intermediate next spring. But this fall from nine weeks, we're probably going to go from the end of September to the first week of December because we'll take one week off for Thanksgiving. But that's going to be the nine weeks. So I'll be announcing that soon. So look out for that if you guys really want to learn. And it's, it's, it's really, really good. It's, mm -hmm. it's thorough. Like the, the borough, borough I'm that from. from. Yes, I'm from New York, New York. All right. They named it twice because so, I'm nice. Because yeah. we nice. All right. So for real. Let me hop in there. I was supposed to be. I know, I know, but you can't. Okay. You can't be at all up in my cookie jar. Uh, soup. Always in my soup. You don't have soup that I don't make. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's from the can. Her does she make she, okay, so I married so Okay, so I told you me, wifey is a Taurus rising, a mm -hmm. Pisces sun, and a Sag moon. So not only are we opposite Virgo Pisces, we're opposite in our ascendants, Taurus and Scorpio. So our seventh house of marriage is each other. Isn't that great? And our, and our fifth house of dating, romance, and fun sex is each other. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. Worked out pretty good. Yeah. So let's go to the ninth house because so, we'll be here all night. I and then, no, no, we'll get back to the chat. Just let me okay. let me get to the ninth house. But, but we have so much. Okay, we're gonna get back to the chizzy. Oh, you know, I won't I won't no ignore the chizzy. No so we did the eighth house of Pisces. What comes next? The trine. This is the fire trine one five nine. This is why I want you guys to go to astro.com and look at the whole sign system. Okay. And you guys can watch my different chart readings and some of my lives where I go through the chart and you'll see, right, that one five nine is the trine so it's the same element fire leo the ninth house is aries so the ninth house is what your beliefs your philosophy your wisdom your higher learning your master's phd guru shaman your father's teachings okay it's also publishing it's foreign lands usually for vacation and it's 50 miles or further away from home it's also the second marriage Okay, the ninth house, right? Her ninth house is Capricorn. I'm her second husband. She married a Capricorn moon. You see how that works? Okay, there's an example. And her north node is there. So she was destined to have me as her second husband. See how that works? So um, when you have Aries in the ninth house, you Leo risings, the ninth house also unlocks your fortunes and luck in life. So Aries, you're going to be assertive. This is ruled by Mars. So you look to see where Mars is in your chart, what sign, what house, and it gives you more detail. That's called house rulership. It gives you more information of the Aries ninth house because your Mars could be in Virgo. Your Mars could be in Scorpio. It could be in Sagittarius. But Aries rules Mars. So you look at the ninth house. So when you have Aries there, Leo Risings, you can be pretty direct. You can argue with your teachers and professors with your father. You can get childlike and immature, but you could be the pioneer maverick. You can definitely be accident prone. You got to watch when you go on vacations. You're not stubbing your toe or you get bit by a tarantula or, you know, you get into a fight with an ostrich. <laughs> we go to the ostrich farm in Tucson. They're really, it's, the best it's so much fun. But when you're on your vacations, you are going to initiate and be sort of aggressive. You may be the one in the family or whatever, or you and your girlfriends or you and your homeboys. You're the one that's like, oh, let's plan a trip. Let's go here. Let's go to Brazil. Oh, let's go to Denmark. Oh, we, we you know, we got to go to Jamaica. Let's go to, you know, um, Aruba. Let's go to the Bahamas. See one of Eric's cousins, my family, you know, we got Bahamian blood. You understand? So Aries ninth house is very adventurous, assertive, aggressive. Um, you may, Leo Risings, when you go on vacation, you may be the one that pursues hooking up with people in foreign lands. Oh, I know what you do, Leo Risings. I know all about you. Okay. So those things can happen. So now we're going to go to Taurus in the 10th house. Now remember, the midheaven does not have to be in the 10th house. It could be 9th, 10th, or 11th. And if you were born on the north or south pole or by the equator, it could be in the 12th or the 7th. But I've never seen it. I've only seen it in 9th, 10th, or 11th house. I think I did a pretty good job. So let's get to Taurus 10th house. So let's just say this is where your midheaven is. But let me explain this to you. If your midheaven's in the 9th or 11th, you merge the energy 
because the midheaven itself energetically is an indicator of how you are seen in public for your career and legacy but it's not an indicator of just the career because the career you could see through the second third uh sixth seventh tenth house there's a lot that goes into when i do a business birth chart for you or and i do business birth charts you guys if you start your own business miss uh, etsy shop okay but but seriously also if you're doing a mini career reading it was only 35 dollars, right i'd look at second third potentially sixth seventh tenth house so let's just say the mid heavens in the tenth house the tenth house itself is your workplace work environment public image your legacy the authorities in your life the government your father now ninth house is your father's teaching tenth house is the relationship with papa papa i love you papa right so relationship with daddy the 10th house is also your reputation, how you're known. Like, oh, I know Keisha Cooper. I know Brittany, Sw Brit Brittany Swanson. She just, she one of the Swanson girls. You know Brittany, right? Like that. So that's how you, the public image, how you're known in the world. Girl, you know Nia Wills. You know Nia Wills, right? That's the 10th house. So when you have Taurus there, what? You can work in banking. You can work in like some sort of police or security check this you can work you can work in um music arts culture things about aesthetics remember it's taurus venus okay is it when no it's still okay so you know taurus there too remember 10th house taurus you're going to work you leave the fourth house Kind of go into the sixth house and then you wind up at the career in the tenth house towards tenth house leos don't drive too fast going to work Taurus is like to drive fast slow down i know you leo rises i know you'd be just slow slow it down you don't want to get no accidents um but you definitely can be very practical and pragmatic at work you can be definitely in tune with your five senses you could be a chef a banker a financial advisor a planner you can be into the arts, culture, music, right? You can be a designer, decorator, instead a chef, a cook. You can be a music teacher, a musical theater teacher. You can be an artist, an actor, a painter. Many things with Taurus, okay? Many, 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 many. But it, the energy itself, Venus in the 10th house, Taurus, you're going to be received well in public. And people will see you as somebody that's kind of... Leo Risings, this is what throws you off with Leo Risings. In public like in the round, you know, the public sphere and career, they can be very kind of calm and chill. They don't really lose their shiz. They're kind of like, yeah, that's cool. Okay. You know, they just kind of like, they're kind of more private, laid back, reserved. They're just about their business because they're there to make money. <laughs> Leo Rise is about making money. They're not playing games. Okay. But that's the 10th house. The 11th house, your hopes, your dreams, your wishes. This is the Bugatti. This is the mansion. This is philanthropic work, nonprofit. This is your older siblings. This is your father's younger brother or his younger siblings. This is stepchildren. This is your social network, the groups and organizations you may join. It could be on a meetup group, Facebook, Learning Annex. This is um, Telegram, stuff like that. But this is the internet. It's also astrology and UFOs. That's why I got the Virgo study in the 11th house. I'm the Virgo astrologer. Uh -huh. Right? So the 11th house is what? Gemini, the Equimini. So for Leos, their friends, they are always chit-chatting and talking with their friends. And they like hanging out with people who are artists and actors and creative people and people that like to gossip and and talk about this and they may be comedians and this and that and social leo risings are very social because they got their gemini 11th house they're always politic and it's not and the 11th house is the arena it's the politician 10th house is the government the authority and <clears throat> the 11th house is el presidente remember the fifth house i told you political discussion and debate well in the 11th house it's also the politician it's the long-term investments right your crypto you keep it in excuse me a year and a day and then you don't have to pay the taxes on it right it's the 11th house and 11th house is where you could see wild exotic animals i mean the sixth house is like the dog and the cat the small pets 
Oh, do you want to go get Goldie? You don't have to. I can. She was okay. asleep. Oh, she was asleep. I don't worry about it. Though. We can show her another time. But yeah, we have a bearded dragon and we have oh. two tortoises. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the 11th house is like the wild exotic animal. So when you have Gemini here, you know, now watch out though, because the social network, this can also where you can see the fake friends, the Gemini. It can be what? Gemini is the mimic, but it's the, it's the twins. And it can be the trickster. Okay. So Leo rises, you got to watch out. Some of those Gemini sun moon risings and your older siblings. You may have a Gemini sun moon rising older sibling. You Leo rising. If you literally do, that's interesting. But you know, they they may not be Gemini's, but they could have that Gemini character traits and energy. Okay. So any questions before we wrap it up with the twelfth house? Any comments you wanna? Let's see. Um, what we did that. And remember, the Leo birth chart sale, Sun Moon Rising, goes to August twenty first. Before we go to the Virgos. Okay. So Evelyn loves her story in her country, written in Spanish. Oh. And um, maybe you can tell us about it one day. Or if you have the book, I mean, if you sold it, you should, you know, maybe we can have you show, talk about it on on the show sometime. Um, Brittany, she likes to draw and paint. Mm -hmm. And Graham Turner. What's up, Graham Turner? Nice to meet you, Eric Taylor. <laughs> um, I imagine my POF. In part of fortune, part of fortune no. in my Pisces eighth house with Jupiter in the Ooh. first. Oh, Jupiter in the first. Okay. Could explain my interest in astrology. Uh, yeah. I mean, but you're natural. Jupiter in the first. You're very philosophical. You want to seek wisdom and knowledge. You know, you could be a guru or a teacher, preacher, professor yourself. Part of fortune eighth house. It's spiritual or financial blessings. So occult knowledge can be a blessing for you. And definitely, yeah. I mean, there could be other placements on your chart that can indicate the love for astrology. What do you have in your fifth house in Sag? Um, seventh house of Aquarius, you know, even that Scorpio fourth house in the home. You know, you may have gotten into astrology from your home life. So, yeah. But th yeah, that could be an indicator. Uh, Elena Giles. Thank you, Elena. I saw you a little earlier up. Sorry. Hey, Elena. I have Cancer and Jupiter in my 12th. Yes, we're about to get to the 12th house. I would find more on the placement. And then, well, look oh, at my oh. channel. Wait, you guys, go through my playlist. I got Jupiter in the 12th house, right? And all that stuff. I mean, if you watch my channel, you see I've been putting in work. But you, you really... The videos are great to watch, but you also need to get a chart reading because then that's how you really understand all the different placements and aspects. OK, and we can do for the Leo Sun Moon Risings, the birth chart sales, normally one twenty five. It's only ninety eight dollars. We meet 60 minutes over Zoom. You get video links of all your placements and I give you a little tiny write up um, and you get the recording of our Zoom meeting. You get to ask me live questions. Or what I call the big shebang, 40 to 50 minute custom video summary, which is a mini movie of your life. Super, super, super fly, super dope. Remember Missy Elliott? I worked with Missy in, um, on, um, what was that crazy movie? Not Death to Smoochie. Um, oh my God. I forgot the, the, the name of that crazy movie. But um, Booty Tank. Missy was holding no, my hand. No, nobody ever heard of that movie. Yeah, you guys may be too we, we young. We heard of it. No, we heard of it, oh. but it kind of sucked, right? Yeah, Pootie Tang was really, not, but it was kind of, it was weird and funny. But anyway, so Missy was in it. And I was hanging out with Missy anyway. But so anyway, Super Duper Fly, 40 to 50 minute custom video summary, normally 250. And you get audio transit recording of your current and future transits, like, you know, Saturn, Pisces to 2026, looking at even Aries and then Pluto Aquarius. I break down all the transits in your chart and you get videos of all your placements. Normally 250 for Leos, because I love you Leos. I have two Leo sons. We have Leo babies. It'll be 10, it'll be 10 in a couple of weeks. Which is why it, wait, wait, it's only 200 and yeah, Leo, oh, Leos, not so the risings, the Leo sun signs, you all are messy. You know you're messy, just a mess. You better say, sorry, mom. It was a mess, but um, was somebody at the door? But so that's that is two hundred and six dollars. 
in a mini movie of your life. So, so let's go to the 12th house. Okay, just, go ahead. I know, not, but real quick. Evelyn, thank you so much. Evelyn, Evelyn has used my holistic deodorant. It actually helps to detox your body yeah. and balance your endocrine system. And it covers the funk. And you could use it anywhere on your body. Her tooth powder everywhere. takes away morning breath, you guys. It's really good stuff. Like, and I kissed her this really morning. Good. I was like, okay, you're still fresh. I am. Yeah, I was. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let me. Okay, wait, wait. Now, who we got a lot. So, D. George said, I'm brand new. I just found you last mm. night. Welcome, D. George. For my Taurus North Node in oh, the 10th house. Nice you, to see both of y'all today. Okay. You, nice to see you too, D. Your Taurus North Node and Leo Rising. What's your sun and moon? And, D. George. Um, she said, okay, with the chart, I'm embarrassed of this Scorpio in my fourth house. Don't be embarrassed, girl. You're nothing to be embarrassed for. No. She's laughing her ass off. You're off. Scorpio nobody South Node. Nobody heard. <laughs> Of that movie. <laughs> That's right. Nobody heard of that movie. No, people know about Pootie Tang. It was, how many? Wait, 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 wait. How was, many? <laughs> with a raise of hands. Raise of hands. How many heard of Pootie Tang? Okay, wait, wait. Come I, on. I've worked Come on a on. bunch of movies. I know you have, but, but like, um, I'm not bragging about Pootie Tang, you guys. I mean, they paid me well, but I'm not, that wasn't like some great, you know, I, I didn't even like the movie. I thought it was stupid. No, it was Chris yeah, you Rock. and the seven people that saw it? Yeah, but. I'm just talking about because I was hanging out with Missy and Missy was nice. I just want to let y'all know Missy was real cool. I think she had a little crush on your boy too, but that's a whole nother thing. But you know. Um so I, I She wouldn't be the first. What's up, Audie Rose? I love that name. Audie Rose in the house. Audie, 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 Audie Rose, I gotta throw you in a rhyme. Like, yo, I suppose like Audie Rose. That's it. The rhyme grows, these ill flows. I turn up my nose. Okay. You know what? Let me tell you something. Left to you right, I could do it all night. Lyrically, you know, I'm always ready for a fight. Mm -hmm. I am tight. All right. Now I can spit real bars. He can. He can. That was like, that wasn't a good representation. Like these people who don't know you, that wasn't a good way for them to see you. You can watch by the episodes. And, and, and wait, wait, look in the playlist. Go check the E Complete in the playlist. I put that there. And also, I got E Complete on uh, Twitter, okay. on, on YouTube. Okay, okay, okay. You okay. can hear my music. Okay. Have a Mercury and uh, uh, I am Audie Rose. She has Mercury and Jupiter and Leo in the 12th house as well. And then Naya. Says she's going to look on the. Oh, thank you, Naya. You're going to look on the site. Thank you so much. I promise you, it's fabulous. And honey, let me tell you something. That my hydrate. Oh my God, my hydrate oil is the freaking. It's so dope. It's awesome because see what you know. What I do is I don't put cheap sunflower seed oil. A lot of people do sunflower seed or some other cheap oil. My oils are not. I start out is with she taking over, all organic. Taking over my show? Because you're eating. You're eating. She's taking over my show? How can you be eating? These good people have come to see you. No, you're reading. So I'm oh, eating while oh, you're reading. Okay. Well, whatever. Now you're, now you're doing Anyways, more than reading. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Lovely website. Are you in ROP? I am I in ROP? What's ROP? I don't know what that is. But hit me up on SavaliPure.com or at on my um, IG, Savali Pure. Wait, wait, let me, wait, Audie Rose, if you're Leo Rising, your 12th house is cancer. I just Did want to you say text that. Me or something? Okay. So listen, let me break down the 12th house. The 12th house is cancer for the Leo Rising. This is why the placid is you don't have Leo in the first and the 12th. Okay. So the 12th house is what? Your self undoing, your loss of debt, loss of energy. It is bed pleasures for sleeping and also for sex. It's hidden enemies and hidden talents. It's isolation, jails, hospitals, ashrams, monasteries, the psych ward. It's spirituality, fantasies, dreams. <clears throat> Most importantly, the 12th house is the subconscious and unconscious mind. And I do a lot of work with my clients in terms of reprogramming that. It's muy, muy importante. The 12th house is also foreign lands for import and export for business. And this is where you could be, you could see moving abroad. Okay. So the 12th house is very, very powerful. 
And you guys, when you have cancer here, it's, um, how can I say it? You're hidden. So what Leo, Leo Risings don't want you to know, and I want you guys on here to be honest and admit to it, they can get afraid of their own emotions. Cancer in the 12th house. Remember, this is private and isolation. Excuse me. The fan is blowing and getting my hair and my nose all itchy. But cancer is what? Cautious, the crab, cardinal water sign, very emotional, sensitive, intuitive, the deep inner knowing. But they're moody. Leo Risings, they have intense emotions and they, they may cry in their bedroom at home and you don't even know. Because out in public, they're the the Libra and the third and they're the Sag and the fifth and they're the go get it Capricorn at work in the sixth and the free loving Aquarius shopping and relationships and the Taurus 10th house kind of cool and smooth and calm. Socialite with the Gemini friends, all mystical with the Pisces in the eighth, assertive when they're traveling with the Aries. In the 12th house, Leo Risings with the Cancer, muy sensitivo, moody. Depression, crying, cautious, loneliness. Okay. The 14 so, year old wants to have a sleepover. When? Tonight. No. Let's get back to this. So, when you have cancer in the 12th house, you guys, your hidden talent, you can be a great teacher. You can be a very nurturing and caring mother or father. You can have serious divine inner knowing and knowledge. So we have Anisha Atkins. Another new person. Wow, I love this it. Is the this is the new night. Whoa. Hi, Anisha. Okay. So okay, we're about Anisha to go, but you can share your. Leo I was going to say, with say Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon. And the 11th house. What, and what's your son? Her Taurus son. Oh, Taurus Let son me son. read it. Go ahead. go ahead. I will get to it. See how we do. And then the 10th house. Listen, you. I was just stretching my finger. It hurt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyways, and um, in the tenth house, and I think Naya had to say goodbye. Yeah, and that's all right. And Ella, um, it was on HBO. Oh, Pudutang was on HBO. Yes, Pudutang was. It on did HBO. make it to HBO. <laughs> No, nah, come on, stop it, man. Um, hey, you can see me down to earth with Chris Rock delivering flowers. But I teach an astrology lesson, and then we read Coffee Talk members' birth charts as a group. So you build community, people all over the world. I got people in Amsterdam and Poland and Australia and New York and Ohio and Washington, California, Arizona, all over. So it's mm -hmm. so much fun. We build community, but we also you learn astrology there, and you have a lot of fun. And I always teach a lesson, but we read birth charts together as a group, as a collective. And it's twenty dollars for two hours. You can't beat and it. Listen, I know he's my husband, and I'm supposed to say this, but he actually is really good. Like for real, for real, he's good. And I think he's worth twenty bucks. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm worth a lot more than that. Better. But that's um, the price for now. It's gonna be going up in the years ahead. So you want to come and be a coffee talk and, member? And so, thank you, Miss Audie. We are a perfect couple. Believe it or not, we actually are a perfect couple. And he does um, relationship coaching, and sometimes for those people who come as couples, I will, you, you get me, because you need a man and a woman's perspective, because you know what I mean? Sometimes when you get to talking to just a man or just a woman, they don't get stuff, but then you get both of us, if you want it, and we can help you, because trust me. I've actually, but I actually did help save help a couple me. of marriages, also with relationship coaching, and also my relationship coaching is really, more importantly, it's about helping you increase your self-love. Because if you got nothing else from this live tonight, you guys, I would want all of you, please, immediately to retire from negative self-talk. You are all amazing, and I thank you all Our for being here. Our subconscious mind is listening. He listens to everything. And even it, even when we gossip and talk about others, yeah, the doesn't difference. It does understand, like, sarcasm. It doesn't understand, you know. We're what, talking about other what, folks. It, it just hears whatever. So we need to make sure that we are very, very careful. And I'm working on it. Wait, as I call it, maniacal intentional about positive self-talk. Love yourself. You're amazing every day. So we're going to get ready to go. Leo, rising sign ascendant. 
episode 140, 152. 152 Knowledge is Love. And wait, I won't be back the rest of this week. Next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern, August 1st, she's returning. You don't want to miss it. Debbie Solaris yes. is back. Oh, the that's Akashic a good one. Records yes, reader. Yes, yes. She is going to be talking about the galactic. Oh, and today is the galactic new year, July 26th. Did you guys know that? This opens up the portal for Getting ready for 8 8. the 8 8 portal, the Lions Gate. Okay. So you could start to see Dog Star Series in the sky early in the morning. Debbie Solaris, we'll be talking about that. We're going to be talking about her jam, as she says, which is aliens and the galactic. Last time she talked about the Kashik Records. We'll touch on that a little bit, but this time we're going to talk more about aliens. And next week, next Thursday, August 3rd, you will see your boy, Big E Astrology, Eric Taylor, with my boy that he was on here, Gemini Brown Astrology. I'll be on his YouTube channel, and we're going to be talking about the future of astrology, AI, technology, all that stuff. So you don't want to miss it. That's going to be 6 p.m. Eastern Next Thursday, August 3rd, Big Astrology and Gemini Brown Astrology. It's going to be super, super dope. We might, both might be spitting some bars on there, too. So you know how we do. All right. So um, and okay. and please email me. All right. Like I said, Taylor to coaching at gmail.com or Big Astrology at gmail.com. The Leo birth chart sale. We have a, we have Kate Jarvis from. Oh. Melbourne is Australia. What's up, Kate Jarvis? Nice to meet you. Nice I'm Eric Taylor. You. I used to work for Telstra. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I she do. loves that, telling that, that, that. That's my she, one connection to Australia. She loves telling that to all the I horses. do. I do. I don't, I don't. Because, like, you, you, okay. So when I met them when I was pregnant with my eldest son, and they actually hunted me down when I was out on maternity leave in order to hire me. And I just was so super impressed with the values and what I saw. Anyways, you, everybody who's been here for a while has heard that story, but they, I was. Well, so these are all new people tonight. Only, oh, that's only true. Evelyn's heard it. That's true. <laughs> and Evelyn, thank you. I love you. You're the best. And thank you for all the wonderful compliments. Evelyn really, is the best. I really you appreciate all of you. And you know, one what? day in the future, Evelyn is going to be a guest on my show. She is. She, she is. sells because amazing Evelyn crystals. Sells amazing crystals, and and I am going to actually wrap. I still have Evelyn gave, or we did a trade, and I have Libyan glass that I still need to wrap. I'm getting the 14 karat gold um, wire to wrap it. So once I wrap it, it's going to be so dope. And I was just realizing I'm getting. I'm. She, We've got some beautiful stuff. I'm going to bring it out. But I think I need to wait and bring it out until Evelyn actually comes on the show so that she can talk all about her business and I can show and what I did me, oh, sorry. with yeah. the things that I got from her so people could see the quality of what she yeah, deals no, with. Yeah, Evelyn deals with the best mm -hmm. quality. But let me, let, me say this. let me say this. So what's really dope, you guys, here's an example. So I've worked with photographers, astrologers, um, body skincare people like her. I've, I've worked, I did, you can even Google them. I mean, you can look it up. Amazing company. It's called Exclusive Tents International. Their website is ExclusiveTents.com. This takes glamming to another level. These tents are sold and they're custom made. The company's in South Africa and Belize. And I did their business birth chart and they are all over the world for resort, fancy, fancy hotels. But you could have it in your backyard. You could live in it. I mean, these are, these are like, tents that are homes and they have all different sizes and prices, but go check it out. Exclusive tents.com. I did their business birth chart. So I'm really, I, I, I get busy with mine with the business birth charts. I'm really proud of that service. So, but you can look at my um, website and look at my community. I have all my different services and stuff like that. So I'm up to about 20 services and I'm going to be officially announcing two new ones. Um, the moon tracking service, it's $134. We meet for 65 minutes. And I track the moon, which is your emotions, your body, your intuition, and your health, also your family. But I explain to you how the moon behaves through your 12th house zodiac wheel, the month cycle, each sign in each house. You get the recording. You get the moon placements in the houses. And you get the moon through all the signs. So that way you watch the recording back. And then you can watch the videos. And then you like, boom totally master how every, because remember the moon is in a sign in house every two and a half days 60 hours so you really get to understand and this is great for men too but really important for women especially with lining up with your menstrual cycle 
this is an amazing service. It's, it's, it's trailblazing. Okay. So check that out. Um, okay. So Audra Rose, what is the email? So you can email him at big E astrology at gmail.com at gmail.com. Yeah. Everybody has Gmail. Although we're going to be switching that over to the new website too. So it will be Eric at big E astrology. Once we get this whole website. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if you look through all my like pages and everything, you'll see tailored to you coaching at gmail.com. So you can reach me either way. Just, I'm just making the transition. You guys, let me slowly. say this. Okay. So D George was saying subconscious, listen to gossip. That's the yeah. girl. It, oh, yeah, is. it is. Let me tell you something. I got to watch that tongue. Major healing right now. Remember universal law. The but word we're, is we're life. We're all supposed to be doing all this stuff right now. So trust me, you're going to be getting hearing more and more of this because I'm really uh, big on that. Today I did chakra opening acupuncture. Yeah. And yeah. So it, our it's acupuncture really is dope. So yeah, yeah, just I'll be talking about that stuff because I, I, you know, I think both of us, our whole purpose is to help people ascend and to get yeah. healthier and we're doing it too you know what i mean like not not coming from a place of knowing everything we no are, it's just humble servants but it, it's growing it's the too, intention and i just want to share it I yeah want people to understand because because it feels good and that's the thing the but spiritual it, it feels discipline good, feels good a level of urgency i think i think more so than any well because we're past, you see the how we crazy are going through something and it's like we don't have yeah well else. you see how crazy the world is and we're literally if you look on NASA's website, the solar flares are the highest they've ever been in recorded history. We're leaving the 3D and ascending to the 5D, but you gotta put in the work. Saturn's in Pisces, right now in retrograde, spiritual discipline, have healthy boundaries. Don't allow energy vampires in your life. Family, relatives, there's a difference, right? Just because someone's your blood, that doesn't give them the right to be mean to you, disrespect you, mistreat you, okay? Family is the one that you make or you choose. Sometimes the relatives, you got to love them from afar. Bye, Felicia. Okay. So it's muy importante. It Thank depends, you guys for sharing your time with us. We Adios. Really appreciate it. Adios. Let's see you Knowledge is love, one. 152. Yeah. All right. Leo Rising. I, I guess I have to ask you this. Yeah, Leo Rising. Okay. Later. Bye. Peace. The moon is connected to my emotion. The, the, the moon is connected to me.